we are back for another episode of Nine and Numb at Home. Good to see you guys again, but this is a very special episode because this time, instead of the Nine and Numb crew, I have got the Rocky Horror Picture Show live cast coming to you from Grand Forks, North Dakota. Say hi, everybody. Oh, hi. Hi. Awesome. Blowing out audio. Awesome. All right. So we are going to, uh, we're going to introduce everybody here real quick, if I can. Then you guys uh, just kind of say hi, say what character that you play uh, during the show, if you will. So uh, I'll start up on my screen, which is in the uh, uh, upper left-hand corner. I don't know how it looks for everybody else, but for, for me, it's upper left-hand corner. Uh, we got Brooke over here. Brooke, how you doing? Hello, I'm great. Awesome. Who do you play in the show again? I play Columbia, and I've also been the assistant director. Yes, you have. That is true. That is true. Sitting next to you there, of course, is Lucas. Lucas was our most recent uh, Dr. Scott. And uh, I think you were our uh, tranny wrangler. That is the technical term. Yeah, I was uh, high internet, Dr. Scott, and head tranny is the technical term. Nice. Nice. Uh, going over to my right, of course, we've got uh, Benny. Benny, man, how you doing? You played uh, for a couple of years now, right? Yes. Nice. Sweet. Now, of course, next to you is uh, Allison, of course. Allison, you've been uh, one of our trannies for how many years now? Two years, man. That's what you get for chewing when you're on camera. <laughs> Sorry. I think two years. <laughs> two years. Okay. Awesome. Now, down on my uh, on my lower right here, or lower left, uh, we've got Julianne. Hello, Julianne. How you doing? Good. Awesome. And you played... Weiss. You played Janet Weiss. Janet Weiss. That is correct. And you uh, just That's for one year, right? You're the most recent. One. That's right. Yes. Yeah. And next to you, of course, is Justine. Justine, say hi to everybody. Hi. What do you play again? Uh, Trixie and Magenta. Uh, oh, yeah, that's right. Both characters, Trixie and Magenta. That's awesome. And last but definitely definitely not least, we got Mr. Seth Foster here. Seth, who you play? What's up, everybody? I play Rocky. The creature. The creation. The if you will. You've been doing that now for how long? One year, and that's hopefully one? ongoing. No, yeah, and hopefully ongoing. Yeah, that's something we're going to be definitely talking about throughout the course of this uh, this episode here of At Home, uh, talking about some of the stuff that we hope will happen in the future for Rocky Horror Picture Show up in North mm -hmm. Dakota. Uh, for our viewers that have been watching our other episodes, uh, you may not know this, but Nine and Numb has been producing the Rocky Horror Picture Show, a shadow cast of the Rocky Horror Picture Show for the last 17 years, I think it is now, 17 as of this year. 17 years of doing the Rocky Horror Picture Show at the uh, Empire Arts Center in Grand Forks, North Dakota. So we're hoping, like hell, that we can actually pull off the 17th year. Uh, this should be a lot of fun, we're hoping. So we're just going to sit back, relax, have some conversation with the uh, the cast members of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. We're going to ask them some questions and just kind of hang out. So uh, we'll start off with the easy one. What's everybody been up to for the last couple of months here? What's everybody been doing during this uh, this incredible pandemic? Sleeping. Sleeping. Working. Drinking. Working. Work. That getting works. rich. Getting rich? What the fuck have you been doing getting rich? Unemployment. I, I, Unemployment. I, I signed up for welfare, and I have more money now than I've ever had. Oh my! It was God. weird. I don't know if I should be sharing that with the internet, but holy <laughs> shit! Lucas, I don't I'll share go with you to too. I make like half of my unemployment paycheck normally. Oh my God, <laughs> you guys, really? That's the truth. I've, I've been working. I'm a preschool parent, so I've been doing child care. Fucking show really? Up. Wow. You guys are lucky that you get unemployment up in North Dakota there. Here in Florida, we were having a hell of a time with the uh, unemployment system down here. So I haven't been working at my job that I normally do uh, for very long, so I wasn't able to apply at all. The hammer and sickle flies up between his head. Yeah. <laughs> so, Seth, what have you been up to, man? Uh, I finished my degree. I graduated on Saturday. Nice! Graduated. Graduated. Nice. Educated. You're a learner, what up? What'd you get your degree in? General studies. Thugonomics. All right. Jack of all <laughs> trades. Thugonomics. You gotta like that. That's awesome. Nice. So uh, just basically working, hanging out, getting welfare. <laughs> That's basically what the uh, what the big uh, the big word is for that, I guess. So okay. Um, so I'm just gonna ask you guys a real quick question. This is general. Anybody can answer this one. Um, what drew you to Rocky Horror in the first place? What 
what brought you into the fold, so to speak? I you think can, you can speak. It's okay. okay. What brought me into it yeah. was uh, I actually dressed as Frank for Halloween two years ago, mm-hmm. walked into uh, O'Reilly's to do karaoke, uh, met up with Tony, who at that year was playing Brad, and he's, he said that I should uh, get into it and put me in contact with all you wonderful people, and uh, here we are. Nice. Nice. Benny, what, how did you end up doing this? One of the, the Brad before Tony. Chris? Yeah. Was roommates with that guy. He was a kooky guy. And uh, so, like, you know, you live with a guy long enough, you, you see his genitals at least once, whether it's on purpose <laughs> or not. And then uh, I go backstage and I, you know, I didn't expect it, but now I see him fully nude. And I was like, well, shit. I mean, it's not like I haven't seen it before. But you caught a gander at his wangus and you thought, I got to do this. Well, uh, you know, maybe that was the hidden agenda. I just needed to see it again. So nice. I had to see it. Well, twice. it wasn't twice. It was, it was like times. more than a times. thing, probably. Multiple times. Why not? <laughs> nice. Allison, what, what, drew, what draws you to this show? I think how I got drawn in was this one. And also, I think you guys had asked, like, because you were running low on, like, trannies that year. Yeah. And you're like, hey. Come join us. And then I was like, okay. <laughs> we usually have that kind of issue every year. 17 years of this, I've always had issues finding uh, trannies. This, that's the chorus for those who aren't familiar with Rocky Horror. They're kind of the chorus characters. They're a, they get the most stage time. A lot of people don't know that. But um, the trannies are on there a lot. And I usually have trouble finding trannies when I'm directing the show. Um, I, I have no problems finding leads. They always show up, but it's the it's finding the, the extras that, that are a problem. So we're glad that you were able to, to join up with us a couple of years ago. That's, that's really awesome. That's the year before you, you uh, scared the crap out of me because you came up to me in the audience and when I was sitting in the audience one year. Yeah. And you were like, and I guess you know somebody in the cast. And I was like, yeah. And then you're like, I'm making you uncomfortable, aren't I? And I'm like. Was this while I was doing the virgin sacrifice on stage with the microphone and everything? Uh, I think you were going around interviewing people. That was the year that we had the uh, problems with the projector, and I had to I had to banter for a full 30 minutes oh. uh, on the fly without knowing what the hell was going on because our tech guy uh, was trying to fix the problem. And so I had to run out into the audience with a microphone and just bullshit for 30 full minutes after midnight at midnight yes and that was just nuts i didn't know you were one of the people that i interviewed that night that's crazy yeah i was the one who was like super scared and like shy because that was the first year i ever was at the rocky work oh show. no so i didn't scar you for life because you ended up doing it on stage yeah pretty much win 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 uh, win was, yeah holy shit so we got down there julia what uh, what, what brought you into this so I've known Rocky Horror since I was about like 14 and when I heard they did live performances in Grand Forks, I was so excited. But I lived here for three years without ever seeing it and then my lovely roommate, Justine and castmate, um, was like, hey, we still need a Janet. And I was like, I've never even been to a live performance, but yeah, I'll be Janet. <laughs> <laughs> well, it worked out in the end. It worked out. I think so, it did. So, had you ever done any any theater or anything on stage before you started doing? Rocky? Yes, yeah. I have done three years of theater previously, so I'm very comfortable with that. Oh, good. But it was the nudity more so that was weird. <laughs> 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 we didn't even kiss at my high school theater. Like, we did the cheek-to-cheek holding hands thing. Oh, gross. Yeah. <laughs> did you go to, did you go to high school in Grand Forks? The other one? No, I went no. in Dickinson, North Dakota. Oh. Dickinson. Dick Dickin what? Dickinson. Dickinson. Son. Oh, oh, we're the Dickinson midgets, if yeah. you've heard about that. I, have. I mean, you are short. <laughs> That's the entire yeah. school. That's the... Public school Holy system. Fuck. I'm surprised they haven't changed that yet. Oh, we had a visit from like the international like little people organization. 
But you know, if you if you're on the school board and you're like, hey, we should change the name, you somehow end up not on the school board. You disappear. <laughs> so, <laughs> I disappear. You're buried in the middle of somebody's land. I don't mean to poke any fun, and I don't want to get in any trouble. But did they send like representatives? Yeah, like a, a head. Oh no, no, they were normal sized people. They brought just a head like, with them that spoke to you. <laughs> Sorry, what? <laughs> Just checking. So, Justine, what? How did you get involved with this? I mean, I remember seeing your audition tape that you had sent, but I'm wondering what drew you to Rocky Horror in general. So, I've been a fan of Rocky Horror um, since about 14 as well. I got interested mm -hmm. in ninth grade. My uh, friend showed me the movie around that time, and also probably shouldn't say this, but a couple of my friends snuck into a show with their mom um, when they were, like, in their, like, sophomore and junior year of high school. Was this one of my yeah. shows? Yes. Oh, How yeah. the hell did you get past security? I don't know. They were with their mom, so, uh, and they dressed up and everything. Well, I don't know, Kelly. Money spends. Me. But anyways, uh, yeah, no, I saw the saw the audition post online one day while scrolling i was like should i do it do i send in a thing and i i did it so yeah we're glad you did <laughs> we're really glad that you did thank god you did and seth last but not least how did you get involved with this uh you know same as everybody else it seems uh right around that time frame ninth grade 14 13 uh i really got into it and um, i thought it was it's really cool it was kind of out there counterculture you know i thought that was mm -hmm. really you know, because everybody's got to fight the power at fucking 14. Um, <laughs> but uh, I've been interested in it since then, and then meeting Tony uh, through karaoke at O'Reilly's, which I can't wait for to open back up, by the way. O'Reilly's? Uh, That's a bar? Yeah, it's a bar in downtown Grand oh, Forks. Oh, okay, cool. Marketing. marching. This is local. Um, cool. But yeah, met, met him there, and being that I was dressed up as Dr. Frankenfurter, um, he thought I would be a good fit to just – uh, you know, get involved in some way, and I was ended up lucky enough being able to play Rocky. So nice, nice. Well, that's great to hear. I'm glad to hear that. We, I have to say this this is going to sound really arrogant, really mean, I'm sure, but I have seen a lot of Rocky horror casts around this country. I really have. I've seen them in Minneapolis, I've seen them in uh, Chicago, saw them in uh, uh, Orlando, I've seen one in Orlando, Tampa as well. And you guys never fail to be probably the best damn cast that I see every year. Uh, it's just, there's something about North Dakotans and the way that you guys don't emote in your real lives, but then you do when you get on stage for some reason. And so when, when you get up there, then suddenly all of those, you know, all of that feeling comes out on stage and it just ends up being just fantastic. Some of the best actors I've ever met all come from way up north, you know? Um, that's where I was born and raised as well. So I grew up with a lot of great people that were actors up there. So it's, uh, it's always nice to see you guys get together and, uh, and make that magic on stage. You know what I mean? Uh, it's, it's always great. I never, have to, uh, I never have to yell at you guys to get it right or anything, so, um, which is great. So another real general question is, what is it about the Rocky Horror Picture Show that you think keeps it so relevant 45 years later. Um, so there, there's this type of debauchery that everyone just hides because, you know, <laughs> and you know, I think it's the, the only time when people actually get to act like themselves because people pretend to be these, like, uh, these paramounts. But when you get inside the theater, you hear people shouting all sorts of profanity, and I love it. Oh, yeah. That's oh, yeah. kind of what I would say, too, like, I got into it because I was like with this thing, girl for like six months and I was still trying to impress her. But what she <laughs> be around um, was it's just a weird, unadulterated fun that you actually can't find anywhere else. I've had the weirdest thing said to me on Halloween past night, and I've never forgotten it. And I'm pretty sure Seth was one of those people. And I was like, I hope to see you. And hey, here we are. It's... <laughs> It's amazing. I you can't find it anywhere else. It's the best. Yeah. It allows for a hedonism that you can't find anywhere else in regular life. Right. Also, unless unless you live in Palm Beach, then 
<laughs> All bets are off. I wish you just moved the floor. Yeah. <laughs> um, how about you, ladies? What do you, what do you think? What do you, what's your uh, feeling on this? I also think it has to do with, like, the dressing up part because you don't have to go as a character from the movie. You can dress up right. however you feel. Yeah. Um, and, like, I mean, it goes with Halloween, but we have, like, a whole, like, you know, weekend almost of mm-hmm. shows and everybody dressed, like, well, I shouldn't say everybody, but most of everybody dresses up how they want to dress, whether it's the characters or a different character from a show or just, like, their alter ego, like. Right know, on. Getting that, it's kind of escapism. Yeah, escapism. Yeah. It's and a form I think of escapism. It's really big here, like two in the Midwest, just because we are still such like a conservative area. Yeah, yeah, like I get judged for my piercings and hair color all the time. People think I'm like some intimidating person where I'm like actually just like the sweetest person in the world. <laughs> oh. You're you're not an intimidating person or I mean I can be. Sure. A little bit. Just a tiny <laughs> tiny bit. I'm a little working bit. on that's got to be fun to be able to walk around a place, you know, in North Dakota like that and be able to just, you know, at any point you could be in the grocery store, you could be in the mall, you could be anywhere and just kind of walk along, just go, you know, and watch them just jump out of their skin. I guess. <laughs> That's got to be something. That's amazing. So nice. So it's, it's kind of an escapism for you guys then. So, and I know that uh, Julianne had mentioned that she had already done things on stage before anybody else not have any prior experience being on stage oh i have experience <laughs> okay you'd, you'd all already done stuff on stage before you'd, you'd done the show like, my last experience with the stage was probably when i was you know nine or ten years old oh, okay. really yeah really it had been that long oh yeah it was uh, the last show i did prior to rocky horror was uh schoolhouse rock Damn! Same production. Yeah, Same. <laughs> yeah. I'm just a bill. Yeah. Uh, uh, I had a solo in in the adjective song. In the adjective song. Oh, that's fucking hilarious, dude! Really? And then just suddenly, the, you, then you're thrust into Rocky Horror out of nowhere. God. I was thrust into Rocky Horror, and I was thrusting during Rocky Horror. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I know that my first experience with Rocky Horror, I want to say, was. In high school, actually, was uh, my sophomore year of high school. Um, now, up there in Grand Forks, there is a, uh, a movie theater up there now called the uh, no, was it River Cinema. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yep. That used to be just a mall. That used to have just stores in it, just regular stores, and no movie theater or anything like that. And one of the, one of the uh, storefronts was empty back in 1992, I think it was. And I had heard a rumor. I was with a bunch of my friends from high school. They said, oh, they're going to be playing the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And I'm like, I don't want to watch a horror movie. I didn't know anything about it. Said, no, no, no. You got to come to see this. They're all theater kids. You know, they're all, no, no, no. You got to come and see this. So I said, okay. So we went over to the Holiday Mall, as it was called at the time. And they had this empty business storefront there with fold-up chairs in it. And then a sheet hanging on the wall and an actual reel-to-reel film projector playing the movie. And people got up during the movie and started dancing around in front of the screen. And me not knowing anything of the culture of Rocky Horror, I'm just sitting there going, sit down. What are you doing? I'm watching a movie. <laughs> I'm getting pissed at him. going, what the hell is this? This is dumb. Throwing popcorn and bread. <laughs> yeah. I'm just sit down. You know, not knowing anything about it. And then finally, I, you know, after the whole experience was over, I walked away from it. And I thought to myself, never again. <laughs> and here we are yeah well and then uh, we started nine and numb up in grand forks the improv troupe up there we were playing at the westward hall at the time at the uh, uh gaslight lounge when that was still around the comedy gallery and uh, we used to have our shows on tuesdays and then we'd have an after show traditionally every single week so we'd have like a good two three hours of just sitting around getting drunk and you know whatever and somebody threw in the Rocky Horror Picture Show again. And then everybody just like in unison got up and started doing the time warp and shit. And I'm going, what the hell is this movie? What is the deal with this thing? And so I finally sat down and really watched it without anybody else around so I could understand it. And then it was at that point, I just went, oh, okay, it's actually kind of cool. It's, it's actually kind of fun. And uh, then we, um, yeah, what was that? I thought somebody said something. Um, we'll edit that out. Probably not. Um, so, 
Yeah, no, we got the we got the whole show started in 2003 was our first show. And that was because we were doing a haunted house. We were trying to find an extra way to make a little cash because we were doing a Halloween show for Nine and Numb there. And so we set up the entire basement of the Empire Arts Center as a haunted house. And we set up all these different gags, you know, like the, the whole uh, window frame closing and there's a monster or a ghost or some shit. And we have the stretchy wall and all that garbage. And we had a pretty good turnout for it. But then uh, the person that was running the Empire at the time said to me, you know, you've got the whole building all night long until tomorrow. And I went, okay. And he said, you want to you maybe show a movie or something? And I'm like, well, sure. And so I thought, okay, we'll throw in the Rocky Horror Picture Show at midnight. Why not? You know, we'll just throw it on. No problem. And as I said, we had a really good turnout for the haunted house. But then when the movie started, the goddamn building was full. I mean, we're talking from front row to back row, over 425 people in the auditorium. And I'm just standing there and I'm looking at all this crap that I had bought and built and put up in the basement for a haunted house. I'm like, well, that was a waste because everybody's coming to see this instead. And that's how that started was... (laughs) It was just by accident. It was just an extra thought. Just went, yeah, we'll throw the movie on, whatever. Maybe somebody will show up, maybe they won't. Everybody showed up to see that. I went, okay, fuck the haunted house. That's over. I'm never blowing a grand and a half on that shit again. We're doing this from now on. And 17 years later, here we are. That's kind of cool. Uh, Now, Rocky Horror, of course, is its own cult phenomenon. Everybody knows that. What what are you doing? What is that noise? Sorry, it's tinfoil. I really it's thought it was tinfoil? Was around. the government watching you? What the hell is that? No, mushrooms. <laughs> oh, sure. <laughs> We're just going to do some shrooms. Oh, shit, man. No, I didn't no, know it was that kind not. of party. Oh, okay. Stop. It's, it's hey, okay. I'm not judging. It's the Rocky Horror cast. <laughs> I wonder, that's my answer. What did you so. expect? Got, got but, <laughs> <laughs> and Kelly got drugged that one time. Yeah, oh, we won't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> ever uh anyway so we all know the rocky horror is its own cult phenomenon do you guys have any other favorite movies that you consider to be your own personal cult favorites that you can't get enough of or mean girls or heathers mean girls and heathers mean girls wow yeah pulp fiction pulp fiction that's another good one that's awesome anybody else got one there no movie Okay. The Mom Warriors. and Dad Save the World. Mom and Dad Save the World. Who was in that? Never heard that one. Oh. Space Girls are easy. Oh my God, I love that one too. Space Girls are easy. Isn't that uh, a really good film? It actually. has Gina Davis. Jack or? Bloom in it. He's so Jack young Jack. and so hot. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Who played so, the like, principal, it's, it's, Ed Rooney, on um? Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Oh, I can't remember what the hell his name Jim is. Jim Jones, just, something like that. Yeah. He was the lead in Mom and Dad Save the World. It's this wonderful B movie of really? just space travel, and uh, and John Lovitz is in it as a as a lead, so you can't go wrong. No, can't go wrong with Lovitz in anything, in my humble opinion. So, oh, that's hilarious. I everyone watches that. Was that on like Disney Channel or something, or did that make its way to the theaters? It was in the theaters briefly in the early 90s. Really? Um, I don't remember that. As a sign of the times, I guess. Uh, um, Katie Ireland. or Kathy Ireland. Kathy Ireland, thank you. She yeah. was a lead in that. Oh, sh- so, oh, shit. Right around that time. Yeah. Really? So I hate it when moms... talk did. about going to the movie theater that early in the 90s. I wasn't there. I can't relate. What? <laughs> oh, no. My... My parents showed me this. I was not there. I'm only. Oh, I'm only okay. Seven. God, and I'm sitting there telling you guys. Ninety two. I'm sitting there telling you guys about how I watched Rocky Horror in high school in 1992, and you're all like, "That's the year I was born, sir." Oh my. You know, two years. I wasn't before born I was. yet. Ninety nine. Children, you're all children. <laughs> <laughs> you're all kids. Unbelievable. I could, I turned to 21 this March. Get out of the call. <laughs> There's got to be a kick button on here. Son of a bitch. It is weird to think that I'm the next oldest person behind Kelly in this group chat right now. Oh, there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Isaac in his early 30s? Yeah. In this Seth. group chat, he said, though. Oh. Oh, it's still. Uh, Seth, how old are you? A little sperm when he was shitting on his dad. 
<laughs> All right. Okay, we'll do it. I mean, Kelly's like 50, so... I am not fucking 50, you little asshole. I am not really. All right, Jesus Christ. I'm not even, I'm not even on, on, the, on the upper end nearing 50. I'm not even close to that yet. Okay, oh. Boomer. OJ, he's not even... No, okay. somebody, somebody, somebody needs to go on Snopes to fact check. I, I am literally two years away from being a millennial. Okay, we'll just put it that way. That's, that's my age. Okay, I'm... Younger than 40? I'm two years above yeah. millennial status. Wow, we got these guys. That's a fact. By by some metrics, by others, more like four. But still. But anyway, <laughs> I'm close to being a millennial. I'm not that freaking old, you little ass. If anyone claims um, otherwise, it's fake news. Dude. I will say this: I graduated high school 25 years ago <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> Woo! <Damn. laughs> no, it's today. It's today. Sorry, 5:22. Uh, 25 years ago today. It was graduation day for my high school class, so pretty old. But anyway, um, nice. So I'm going to ask you guys uh, this then. This is going to be a fun question that you all can answer here. If they were to do another, yet another, remake of the Rocky Horror Picture Show today, but this time... So we don't talk about the other one. In, yeah, this time, no. instead of it being on TV, it's going to be in theaters. You have an unlimited budget. And you can cast anybody. The only caveat is that it ha they have to be alive. Who are you going to cast in that movie? Who would you cast, first of all, who would you cast as Brad? Oh, I was just going to say I have an entire cast, and we would just bring back those who played it in um, Perks of Being a Wallflower. Ooh. I want Ezra Miller to be Dr. Frankenfurter. That's actually wow. it. They actually did a pretty like good like little sequence there. Emma Watson would be Janet Weiss. Ugh. Emma Watson would be a fantastic Janet Weiss. <laughs> you and Will Ferrell would be Brad. Will Ferrell huh? as Frank Furter. Will Ferrell as Frank Furter. Old men and women. Just just for my own sick. Follow me on this. Imagine this, Frank and Furter. Imagine this, Benedict Cumberbatch. No. Yes. I know. Yeah. I can see it. Yes. I can see it, but I don't like it. You don't like the idea of Benedict Cumberbatch doing uh, doing the uh, sweet transvestite? Everybody I I feel like no, no. I just think he has the wrong body type. He's too skinny. Oh. Yeah, he's a little on the lanky side. But then again, so was so was Tim Curry though. No, no, he had a bit more curve to it. Yeah, like he had an ass. Tiny you know bit. who wanted to have an ass? Benedict Cumberbatch. Give him give him butt plants. Time to do some squats. You know. Somebody said Stephen, Stephen Colbert would make a good Dr. Scott. Stephen Colbert's yeah. Dr. Scott is not a bad idea at all, actually. I still say Ewan McGregor. I don't know. Actually, Brad. Brad. John Cena. Ewan Brad. McGregor is Brad. Ewan John. McGregor is Brad is not a bad thing either. I was actually thinking, uh, what the hell is it? Jesse Eisenberg. <laughs> no. Absolutely no? not. I like your Eddie. Buddy. Really? All right. So maybe we can all agree on this one then. How about this one? New Eddie, Jack Black. Yeah, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Is that even yes. a question? Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> Jack Black <laughs> as Eddie would be the coolest fucking thing I think we would see in years. If we had to have yeah. a wedding, yeah. yeah. Meatloaf is still alive. He could still play. He could okay. still be Eddie. I hate to <gasps> no, say, but, but have I... you have you heard him sing in the last, oh, 20 years? No. Oh, God. He sounds like he's like, mm -hmm, I you know, he can't, he can't go much him. drugs. He can't, he doesn't have the breath in him anymore to do it. I think he had a heart attack recently and fell on stage. Oh, my yeah. God. That's right. Okay, yeah. we'll keep all of the original audio. He just needs to act it out again. <laughs> I'm not sure if Bitch Tits Bob could actually pull it off. He played that character in Fight Club. He played Bitch Tits Bob. In Fight Club. And now I'm sitting there thinking to myself, do we really want to see Bitch Tits Bob go at it again? His name was Robert Paulson. Yes, of course. His name was Robert Paulson. <laughs> His name was Robert Paulson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, who do you think should be Columbia, though? Cardi B. Oh, 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 you. Shit. Somebody said Kristen Bell or Nicki Minaj. Who the fuck does no, all who, that, is that? is two one completely one different things. No, Christian Bell. There, I said it. Fuck it. What? Who? 
Hell in the bitch. bottom corner. Fuck it. Hell, hell, hell in the bottom corner. Thank you. Maybe. Like it's a hell bit of a combo, yeah. but it's a good choice. I feel like she's Everyone. getting too she's up there in age. I would definitely I would do. do her for like um, a magenta. She's more of a magenta than a Columbia. Columbia Bella Thorne. Oh. Yeah. That one. What about Billie Eilish? No. See, no. I feel like she'd be more of like a side character just because like she's already her own character. She'd make a she great could... tranny, but she's too fake sad for everything. <laughs> Can you imagine Billie Eilish doing the floor show? She'd be like, it was great when... <laughs> She'd whisper through the whole thing. Now, check out my... Here's my choice for Magenta. Lady Gaga. Be sick. Lady Gaga is Magenta. Yes. Yeah, I'm okay with that. What's hey. that? I think she only works with Bradley Cooper now, though, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's it. Nobody else but Bradley Cooper. I guess Bradley wow. Cooper will have to be Frank and Fred if we're going to get her on. <laughs> Actually, Bradley Cooper could be a good riffraff. Yeah. But I was I thinking Tom Wilson would make a good riffraff. I was thinking Jared Leto. I don't mm. like Jared Leto. See, no. he, he, he would make a better riffraff than he would make a Brad. Yeah. Yeah. Tom Wilson or Neil Patrick Harris. I would agree that Jared Leto could. It would just be pretentious. But he would be Patrick Jared Leto win, yeah. swap him out with Joaquin Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> That's the real strat right there. No, Joaquin Phoenix has. Uh, as the professor. Oh. Dr. Scott. Blab. Blab. What are you doing? Yeah. Blab. As Dr. Scott? You know who I had picked for Dr. Scott? I shit you not. Ooh. William Shatner. Yes! Oh. oh my god! Sexy. I thought Bill Shatner would be phenomenal. Or, what are you doing here? Or Betty White. Oh, I guess now he would be all the time. <laughs> Betty White as Magenta. Let's make an all old people cast. Fuck it, Betty White for everything. We have the power. Everybody's yeah. in the 90s. A one man show. A Betty one White. Woman show. Horror, one man show. I just want like, Betty White yeah, to kiss my also. cheek before she kicks the bucket. Yeah. Danny just DeVito. Like, it's a dream. Danny DeVito as Frank. <laughs> God. Can you imagine that one? <laughs> yeah. I'll get you a satanic mechanic. <laughs> I like Danny DeVito more than Cumberbatch. Wow. See, I thought he would be great at it. Let's all get a short cast and call it the Dickinson cast. Yeah. <laughs> That's a I think I know a few midgets for you. All Dickinson all the time. You can call him I don't up. Know. Speed dial. What about Christopher Walken as uh, Dr. Everett Scott? Yes. <laughs> I feel like I would like him more as a um as a riffraff. When oh, Eddie said yeah. he didn't like his daddy, you it's, know he was a no good kid. No, no, no. Rami Malik would be a better riffraff. Oh, oh my oh, god. Yes. god. That is really good. Rami Malik. Oh my god. He would be outstanding at that. No, what about the, the criminologist bring back Tim Curry? We've already done that though. That's the thing. We already did that. What about Christopher Walken as the criminologist, though? I like that. That would be phenomenal, I think. It's just I a step to the left. <laughs> it you know, I think Karen Eggerson would be night. great somewhere in it. <laughs> Ow. It's just a jump Wait. to the left. A step to the right. Not a step to the right. I was in the deer hunter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't kill Natalie. I didn't push her off that boat. I think Taron Egerton would make a great addition to the cast, but where would he go? Because I can't place him. Rocky. Rocky? Yes. Rocky, yeah. For sure. I uh, think he would be fantastic as Rocky. I think be <laughs> Dwayne the Rock Johnson as Rocky? <laughs> oh, a black shit. Rocky. That's, oh, that's a good one too. We've been missing out on this opportunity. He Dwayne. gave it to us. You could oh, kick Charles you. Atlas in the. Oh, oh my God! <laughs> as he would okay, say, but a black Rocky, Rocky, Atlas, a beautiful Atlas. chocolate man. Yeah, that's I awesome. think a Broadway show. Yeah, so no, that'd be great. We could get uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson to do it. That'd be hilarious. Jesus. So now I'm going to ask you guys a different question, and <laughs> this should be funny. 
What is the, in your time of doing Rocky Horror, what is the wildest thing you've ever seen happen during the show, uh, backstage, on stage, anything? What's the wildest shit you've you seen? Wait, in our changing room? Oh, wait, no, no, wait. Edit that out. That, that's probably something you don't want known. <laughs> we are going to talk after this. I got to know what the hell this, what happened there. Because I usually leave you guys downstairs and I just walk away and go into the lobby and go, I don't want to know. <laughs> We're going to have to talk. I got to know what the hell happened here. <laughs> God, the craziest gonna... thing that happened with me is that a ghost grabbed my ass in the murder tunnel. That was me. Sorry. <laughs> you weren't even there, Benny. That, that's the thing. Benny's the ghost. For our viewers here, the Empire Art Center in Grand Forks, North Dakota, is simply one of the most haunted theaters I have ever been in in my life. Uh, I would say the most haunted location, but that actually goes to the Alamo in San Antonio, in my humble opinion. But... Um, Definitely. We'll, we can talk about that. Let's, let's, uh, let's talk about that a little bit later about the paranormal involved with uh, Rocky Horror since it is uh, around Halloween and what have you. And we've all got stories involving ghosts. So it's some manner. Right now. Oh, yeah. We'll talk about that. But so you've seen a ghost. What, what about you? Lucas? Oh, um, not related to ghosts, even though some of you have really white genitalia. Um, still the tradition <laughs> that everyone does, at least the male Rocky leads do, right behind the curtain, right when Kelly's still talking and doing the DJing for the show, they just helicopter their dicks, right? No, no, right. this is not what you're talking. All, all the time. And I'm like, wow, this is some real shit. This is some real, that's what got me in. I was like, wow, we are animals. You weren't, you weren't supposed to that. talk about that. Oh, <laughs> I did that. Cut it out. <laughs> This is happening behind the movie screen while I'm on stage talking. We're, we're, we're just, right we're just joking, Kelly. We, we, we're hundreds not, of people. We're not actually doing that to you, we're Kelly. We're not actually doing that. No, thank you like, for that's not, silly. Thank you for not letting funny. me see that. I would Lucas lose my shit. God <laughs> almighty. Oh, I did, it wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me. So imagine if the next generation, dumber than dumber, they like the lights were left on behind stage, and they and they didn't know how the screen worked. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Harold, he's got a tiny little pecker. God, Harold, I'm gonna I'm gonna cast somebody named Harold to play Rocky at some point. You never know. Harold. Fucking the next generation is gonna have weird ass names. Why not put Harold in there? God, yeah. We could just. Ones. We could just bill Seth, Seth as that name. Is no one has to know. Yeah. I'll be Harold. I'll be Harold all day. I'm going to tell everybody, welcome to the show, everybody. And behind me, you can't see it on the screen, but Harold is whipping his pecker around. <laughs> no, this last season, uh, when we did the ball drop, as it's called, it was me, Tony, um, Zach. Benny, were you in it? Were you doing the ball drop with us? Maybe. I don't know. So me, oh. Tony, Benny, and Zach all just whipped our junk out right in front of the entire audience. We were looking him in the eye. All of our Oh, yeah, because you can see through the screen, but they can't see you. Exactly. Oh, God. Yeah, we were just, we were oh. just hanging tackle back there, man. Man, if they could have saw it, if they, they, they would have saw it, we would we would be getting parts left and right. You know, we don't have to worry about getting a job or whatever. Number one, I'm not surprised. Number one, I was I'm not watching surprised. backstage once, and I caught a glimpse of that. I looked, and I just kept walking. I am so shocked that none of you ladies have sued yet. <laughs> Thank I you for not. I live with this one, so. Oh, my God. You know. You made us sign a contract saying we couldn't. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, backstage generals are out a lot. That is true. We just <laughs> changed back there into corsets and stuff, like. Some of those changes are really quick. Like, yeah, the no, other one is like 90 seconds. seconds and I expect compliments, you know? I know when we're changing the floor. floor show, I have to take my fucking golden shorts off. And then somebody, some poor tranny is standing right there holding my fucking pantyhose up, ready to go. Mm. And they just get in a full eyeful of my dick and balls. That, that, nice. that was not me. That was I think that was Bethany. This is why I never go backstage while the show is on, because I'm like, no way. 
No, I'm going to get caught up in some living dystopian nightmare that I'm going to have to deal with here. And then I'm going to have to go to a therapist and be like, they were all such a snake. I don't know. Well, I mean, we're, I've seen we're, far too many of my friends naked now. Well, yeah. well we're all adults. We, we all know we need to get changed real quick. We don't really care. You know? It's true. In theater, that's the way it is in theater, anywhere you go. But Rocky's just got a different vibe where it's just like, oh, my God. You're just like, well, anything goes. Yeah. You know, I Kelly expects a, a face full of taint every Rocky horror. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I pray that it doesn't happen. <laughs> Especially with being in the Rocky Horror, your bubble doesn't exist anymore. No, it's gone. No one, one is. That is true. Like, at this point, I don't care what anyone sees. I'm mm. just like, all right. Well, I mean, you know, I, don't that I, guess. I had some shame before I joined the Rocky Horror cast. Now it's all gone. I have we've, no shame. We've all right, Green Boy. That's a, that's a surprise. We've gone and corrupted you. No, no, no. I'm pretty, pretty sure he's been crappy. There was not a lot to lose. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't much. It wasn't much. Oh, my God. Now, I got to tell you this. Here's my craziest story from Rocky Horror. This is the craziest thing I ever saw. In 17 years of doing this, uh, one year, we did it where we had the stage was built out. The apron of the stage was actually built out another 10 feet. So we had removed the first couple of rows. And this is because the Thompson High School had been doing grease there like two weeks before. And I talked to them and said, could you just leave the stage set up so that we could have that much room? Because you guys know how it is on our stage. You've got just about eight feet from the apex there to the screen. And then it, then it goes out even further or uh, in even further at that point. But anyway, so for that show that year, I was able to put a desk, a full-size desk with a globe and books and all that stuff. And I came out as the criminologist and sat at that desk for the entire show and played the criminologist. Now, <laughs> I get up to do one of the uh, monologues during the movie. So I'm standing up there. I got the spotlight on me. I go to center stage to do my thing. And <laughs> prior to the show, I had set up the desk and I put out a martini glass filled with clear liquid. It was an actual martini that night. And so I just thought, screw it. I'm just going to have a drink. Nobody's going to know. Usually it was water. I'm like, it's Saturday. I'm going to oh. have a drink on stage. I go to center stage. And all of a sudden, out of this black auditorium, I hear gum, 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 gum. some guy leaped up onto the stage from a standstill damn near, leaped up onto the stage, grabbed my drink, downed my martini in front of everybody, Sets it back on the desk and pew, out the door, not back to his seat, out the back of the theater and out into the street. He was gone. What a legend. And Baller. the worst part is, is that our, our uh, spotlight text for that year had, they put the spot away from me and put it on him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I'm standing there with this mouth agape thing going, what the fuck? And there's a spotlight on this guy, just gur, 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 wham. And then they followed him all the way out to about row J when they had to stop. And then phew, out the door he goes. And I'm left standing on stage. They put the spotlight back on me. And I'm just doing this one. Yeah. Yeah. So that was definitely the craziest freaking thing that had ever happened to me during Rocky Or. I mean, I've got a hundred other stories that I can never, ever tell. But that's the Welcome one. to North Dakota. Yeah. Well, just that put one them in the tell. group chat. Don't tell them here. Yeah, no. I'm, <laughs> but, no, that was the craziest one that I can talk about. Maybe the second craziest one was the year that a guy got called out during the show into the lobby. He was getting a phone call. At his, it was his dad was mad at him for being at Rocky Horror. And his dad showed up, came to get him, and they had an argument in the lobby while the movie's running. He gets pissed off, turns around, and <clears throat> punches the, a hole in the wall and then leaves with his dad and I'm like standing there in the lobby I'm staring at this hole in this historic theater's wall I'm going oh, oh, oh. so yeah I got the bill for that one. Oh my god that sucked and that was expensive that was not cheap I'll say that. that was not nearly as expensive as the year that our riffraff went through a pane glass window Ooh. yeah we were doing one of those late night tack rehearsals that we used to do until about three in the morning and our riffraff at the time had ordered a pizza because he was hungry and the pizza came and so he ran out into the black lobby it was totally dark in there and he went to go and get his pizza he saw the pizza guy standing outside thought it was a door and walked right through 
a pane of glass went right through the window. And we hear this enormous shattering noise. I'm like, oh God, what the hell was that? So I go out in the lobby and there he is lying in a pool of blood in the lobby. And the pizza guy standing there just with a pizza in his hand, just staring at everything going, uh, uh, you know. And I'm like, what the hell, dude? And no, I thought it was the door. He goes, oh, just... And so he had to he had to go and get stitches. He had to go to the hospital, get stitches, three o'clock in the morning. And we had to be on stage the next night. And so he's kind of limping around because it was his leg that he got stitches on for the rest of the show. Thank Christ, he's riffraff. And yeah, thank God he was riffraff. Yeah, so we could sell it. But yeah, no, I've got I've got a hundred a hundred crazy ass stories that are like that. But yeah, that's that's just nuts. So, Justine, what is the craziest thing you've seen? <laughs> this last year, someone just flashed like their uh, whole dick on stage. What? Yeah, that happened this last year. Uh, it was on the last night, I think. Yeah, it was like one of the last shows. They just full dick. The was, this, was this one of our Hilton, players? Right? Yeah, he had a he had a um, he had a it kilt was, on. He had a kilt on. He flashed. Oh, I remember that guy. <laughs> this is during. Oh, the, he had a nice dick. Kilt, kilt legend. legend. This is at the beginning. I remember now. I laid into that dude for that. I remember. I the, the, the guy dressed like Rocky whose balls looked out of his shorts. God. Oh, yeah. No, I remember that, too, though. That, 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 that was another one. We had a girl one year during the uh, the, the Virgin Sacrifice who I, I do the whole, all right, everybody, uh, you've got just 30 seconds oh, to strip down into your underwear. And so everybody did it like normal. And this is, it had been going on for probably 10 years at this point. No problems whatsoever. This girl was wearing completely transparent underwear. And I'm trying to block her as I'm standing on stage. I'm going, okay, everybody, this is fun. We're having a great time. And she keeps like, <laughs> without no, she never, even, it never even occurred to her that she was wearing completely transparent underwear. And she keeps like, oh, he's in front of me and would step to the right. And I'm going, no, 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 no. And then finally I turn around and looked at her. I said, I can't, I can't have you standing on stage like this. And she's like, what do you mean? Like what? And she looks down, she goes, oh God. She goes, <laughs> and just starts putting her clothes back on as fast as she could. <laughs> Poor thing didn't know. That was phenomenal. I'm just laughing my ass off. I got a microphone in my hand. I'm just going, you know. You chose the wrong underwear that day. Oh, yeah. It was completely, it was like mesh. Oh, no. It was like pink mesh or something. In the days following the Rocky show where the dude who dressed as Rocky for Virgin Sacrifice had his balls come out, you have no how how many people Came up to me and was like, oh, I heard your balls fell out. You fucking oh, no. stayed. I'm like, no, that wasn't me. That was some amateur. <laughs> some amateur did that. That's not a pro move. That's amateur stuff. <laughs> my balls stayed in my shorts, thank yeah. you. Yeah. No, I left, the, I left the goodies in the uh, in the wrapping. If you want. So the Rocky that her. balls did fall out, I sold him those shorts. And he knew prior that they were too small. And I was like, it's the look. It's fine. That's your fault then. <laughs> you sold him that you sold him that when you were working at, at work yeah i had to make the sale man god man i was a good employee to the last day nobody can say different no loyalty to us though no none at all actually all the loyalty to you because i was fucking amping the fuck out of our show while working right <laughs> during halloween i was like go to rocky Fucking do it. I was telling everybody, like, I think I went to El Bistro. I'm like, hey, you. Oh, yeah, you gave your, your one... comp tickets to the two people there. What? Yeah, like, I was, even the servers, I was like, you should go to Rocky Horror Picture Show. It's got oh. debauchery and all kinds of shit. Everything you love. And then you're yeah, friend, no your, your friend, my comp tickets. The um, Rocky whose balls right? fell out yeah. is a weird ass dude. He hangs outside of the bars because he's like 19. He hangs outside oh. of the doors of the bars and just fucking talks to people about how he wishes he could go in all night long from about nine to two he just stays I'm... there god oh my god dude get alive <laughs> yeah let's not mention names though because they can't defend themselves here but well i don't know his name but you know, he's weird. we keep it we keep everything away from our work ironically like all the people in the streets but it's how the dude bitch tits <laughs> people come up to us and are like hey you're doing a play, and we're like, no, what? What are you talking about? We're not. 
at least I tell my coworkers what it is, but I keep it very under wraps because again, I do work with preschool age. So it's a bunch of four year olds. Yikes. And my middle school crowds are like, hey, you're, we want to see your show. And I'm like, no, you don't. Uh, we wouldn't let you in if you wanted to anyway. No, unless, you're, <laughs> unless you're Justine, then apparently you'll get in under the age, apparently. Oh, I yeah, she's snuck in the No, I was in high school as well. <laughs> Have any of the parents ever come up to you saying they've seen the show? Yes. Parents? Oh, God. Parents? At least one. Two uh, parents? When we, when we do a lot of our practices at that space, uh, God, what is that called? Um, the gymnastics place? Yeah, the yeah. gymnastics place. One of the na- gymnastics, gymnastics moms came up to both of us and it's like, hey, you're the old Navy guy. And I'm like, I am. You do this too? Yeah. Wow. Have a good show. And then left. I'm like, wow. <laughs> well, I did. I was multiple years ago, so she cool. Yeah, she's cool with it. Oh, we have another corn? Wow. That's not, now, I have had parents have actually come up and complain to me about their kids being at the show, even though they're kids over 18. And they'll write me and they're like, I cannot believe that you allowed my daughter to come and watch your show. And I'm like, she's over 18. What the hell is this even a conversation about? A, I don't know you. B, I'm not even in the same state as you. Why are we talking about this? And so they're I, Karen. Yeah, there are a bunch of Karens. I've had that happen a number of times, numerous times, in fact. Um, so now I'm going to ask you guys here another question, and that is this. In the age of COVID-19, the age of the coronavirus, where do you see the future of Rocky Horror Picture Show and shows like this? What do you think is going to happen in the future? I just want it to get back to normal. Yeah. Like, it is it's it is the novelty. It's the reason people come and people stay and come back repeatedly. A lot of the people who come to Rocky are, like, long-time supporters. Yeah. And just, it's it's the whole fact that you can come out at midnight wearing nothing but a dog collar and have a great time. <laughs> but how do you think how do you think this whole social distancing and the fact that we have to go around wearing masks now everywhere? Do you think that's going to affect people coming back to uh, to the theater again? Or hey, funny no, thing. not at all. No, no, no. They, like too many people are already fed up with this shit. Um, yeah. If anything. <laughs> Uh, every generation's had one plague that were like, oh shit. There was like, washing your hands is like an actual thing. <laughs> Who would have known? Right. And then, uh, right. and I guess now, because like I've, I've been to plenty of public bathrooms and just like people my age and younger are just like, I'm just going to pour some water on my hands and I'm pretty sure I got shit particles, but I can't see it, so it's fine. Benny just <laughs> likes to go to public bathrooms. <laughs> yeah. yeah and, and it's, it's like, now people are probably just going to wash their hands. Like when this thing blows over, that's probably going to be the only thing. Some people are going to go right back to not washing their hands. But Now there has been talk that a lot of theaters are going to be going to a new model, so to speak, where they're going to be sat intermittently in the rows, meaning that uh, one row will be empty, then, then a person, then another two seats over and a person and things like that. And everybody will have to wear masks and the whole deal. And do you think that a show like the Rocky Horror Picture Show, whether it's in Grand Forks or anywhere, Albuquerque, New York, especially New York, do you think something like that is going to be able to, uh, to survive? Or do you think there might be a new way of doing Rocky Horror from this point forward, do you think? If everybody well, stops touching each other, maybe. It's Rocky. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I feel yeah, well. like with the restrictions, like the spacing, I feel like the diehards would still do it. I feel like it would just be harder to get new people into it. Yeah. That's a, as the producer of this show, I can tell you that is definitely a concern of mine is that uh, new people aren't going to show up anymore to this kind of thing. And I worry that, uh, and not just for Rocky Horror either, but for theater in general, you know, just getting new people to come out and watch live theater might be a challenge from this point forward. And uh, I worry about, a lot of people are talking about the possibility of a second wave coming right around Halloween. Halloween. Might be during that time, and that is another concern of mine. I mean, and the, the, there's, there's the highest prob- probabilities that a lot of us have probably already been infected around October, November. Mm-hmm. It's a possibility, yeah. So around that time was when I had some crazy, uh, uh, like I had pneumonia-like symptoms, but it wasn't half as bad as like full-blown pneumonia. 
Right. I, was, I, I just shut in for like two weeks, and then after that, I was good. Right. Now I know, uh, Brooke. You you work pretty closely with the local community theater there in Grand Forks. Uh, have you heard anything at all about plans for what they're going to do in order to reopen? Or well, I heard for the latest show that just got canceled for like this past April mm -hmm. that both of us are in. Oh. We're thinking about maybe doing it again in September, but a bunch of restrictions are going to be enforced, like wear gloves, wear masks. Gloves, yeah. though. The streaming, even. Streaming it? That could be... It's, it's a lot. And it's ironic that it's like a mystery, too. So it's like we're wearing masks, and it's like, I wish I could read your face. Yeah. That's crazy. Now, how, how are you going to be doing something that has, I mean, getting the rights to just perform it live is one thing. Getting the rights to perform it live and stream it over the internet, that's got to be just really prohibitive. I can't imagine. I don't, and the worst part is, is like, I talked about this with our Brad, who I wish was here, but it's okay, is like, theater as an art form is meant to be like in front of you like you can look up and see the guy right. i don't know if people would like pay money to stream a show on stage you know like that's just crossing wires into something that you know you yeah. know go to an actual film for that or a television show well you know? how do you how do you uh like if someone wants to go out like to a theater and berate me they can't do that if they're looking at a computer screen because they like they're staring at you're they're screaming at their laptop. They're not screaming at me. Yeah, yeah, that's something that that I think is going to be very interesting from this point forward is seeing how theaters are going to be able to move forward. Now, I I also worry as the producer, I worry that people are going to think that this is just the movie that we're playing, and then they're going to show up and see actors on the stage, and they're going to be like, "What is happening here? You can't be near each other like that," you know. I worry a little bit about that. Um, I I was, go ahead, Seth. Oh, sorry. I was just saying, I personally think that with everyone's, uh, the majority of people's attitude towards it now, that when it comes time for at least our show specifically come uh, next October, that it'll be essentially blown over. I don't want to say blown over because this is the wrong word. Yeah. But um, public. L lessened. I think it'll go the way the swine flu, the bird flu, SARS, uh, yeah. all serious diseases, but was a huge scare and then kind of gone away almost as fast as it started. That's my hope. Got and that's handled. My hope. Yeah. That's, that's a big hope, I know, because uh, I've been in contact with a number of other Rocky Horror troops, and we're all asking the same questions right now. Like, what the hell are we going to do? Um, so... Right now, as of this moment, this is for our fans as well, not, not just for you guys, but for our fans that are watching as well. Right now, there are no plans to cancel the Rocky Horror Picture Show for 2020. God damn it. Right. I still have to talk with the, uh, with the venue to come up with some guidelines, come up with some answers. I'm thinking perhaps closer to August, we might have some better ideas, and I think they'll have a better idea of how they're going to do things as well at that point. Um, so hopefully, fingers crossed, we're hoping that we're going to be doing the live show as always. And we'll be back for our audience again for the 17th year in a row because we've never missed a year. So we're hoping that that should be what happens. So <laughs> we're very excited, hoping. Um, I work for a major theme park. I'm not going to name them, but I work for a major theme park here in Florida. And we have a Halloween event that is that brings in thousands and thousands of people uh, right around that same time that we're going to be doing Rocky Horror up in North Dakota. And I know that they've got concerns as well. How the hell we're going to be able to pull that off uh, with a, with this second wave looming over us as a possibility. So there's a lot of decision making is going to have to make or going to have to be done soon. And that's going to be very, very interesting. To see that, so. well, think of it like this. Like, like I said, there's too many people are kind of fed up with this shit. People are going to, gonna go back to what they were doing before whether or not like because uh they become desensitized to things so quickly you see on the news all these tragedies happening people are like oh how sad and then a week later they don't they don't even remember it so they're gonna go and they're gonna go whether or not there's you know something on the news saying things we could call it covid fatigue at that point perhaps <laughs> media fatigue on the whole situation 
Uh, so I got to ask you guys this. How is how is the situation up there with the, uh, the, the COVID-19 thing going on? Here in Florida, we locked down pretty damn tight for a, about a month and a half. And Looser I, uh, than a goose. What's that? Looser like than a goose. Said. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Go uh, ahead. So, but I mean, we, we locked down real tight. How did North Dakota handle it? Did they, uh, you know, did you guys go through a full lockdown situation? Um, you know, the everybody being told you cannot even leave your house. Don't no, go to we weren't in a mandatory leave. lockdown at all. Really? No, we, no. We, we, had a, we had a short lived where a bunch of businesses were like, no, nope, we're not doing it. Mm -hmm. You're going to die if you come here. Where like, um, th th there's legitimate concerns. Um, yeah. But, uh. Short after, everyone just kind of slowly yeah. just started opening up again. Yeah. Well, that's good to hear because, no, we were – Tampa, Hillsborough County in particular where Tampa is located, that's where we're at right now is in Tampa, where I'm at in Tampa here. And Hillsborough County went on such a lockdown that they were threatening fines and jail time for anybody that was seen out on the beach, anyone that was in a park, anyone that was out in the open. So to speak, well, I mean, and if, you're, if you're if you're by yourself and you're going to give someone a thousand dollar deferred charge, if you did if you did that in Texas or or any sort of conservative state, you'd also have to know that there would be repercussions to, to, if you tried to enforce that. Yeah, thing. that's what we're I'm seeing in Michigan right now. I know that. Down. Seeing that pretty heavily in Michigan, seeing that in Pennsylvania, California, right now as well. I mean, luckily, we had a really good governor here, and he kept things pretty white. You know, pretty pretty open for the most part it was the mayors and it was it was the the city councils that really uh, put the lockdown we had a guy who was doing um uh he was opening his own game store he had a game store in saint pete and uh he got arrested full-on arrested just for doing curbside people weren't even coming in the store and he got arrested for that so i i was just uh really curious of how north dakota handled this because i've got family up there still and uh, they haven't really, you know, they don't really say anything about what's going on because they like being at home anyway. It's in our genes. Uh, <laughs> we're homebodies, most of us. Do you want an idea of how North Dakota's doing right now? One of our trannies is just hitting up the bars. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> I'm probably going to be joining. One of our trannies is just hitting up the bars right now. There you go. Nice. What a oh. champ. Well, well, let's start. Uh, Brooke, you got something? What Benny said with North Dakota, like, it's kind of eh right now mm -hmm. because people just don't care. Anymore. Huh. Well, I'm glad that you guys still got to keep some semblance of normalcy up there. I, I can't imagine what it would have been like if you had been locked down real tight and after being nine months of winter, more or less, you know. We would and, uh, lose our fucking minds. A lot of people don't really do much anyways. So the, the moment things open up, they're going to be like, well, we're going to do some things and then shut away again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? That's, that's got to be tough to know that it's just going to get colder again <laughs> here in a few months. You know? Yeah, we're almost half a year in already. Jesus. I mean, personally, I'm livid that I can't go do karaoke as soon as I get off this call. Yeah. Yeah. That's my thing. That's what I do. Just got to sing into the street. Yeah. I mean, well, I'm, personally, I'm being in bar, retail. But... Oh, sorry. No, go. Oh, I was saying I'm still going to go to the bar, but I don't think there's going to be karaoke. I'm mad about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was just saying with like work with retail, I'm so happy to be back. But um, at where I work, we enforce masks because it is still a pandemic, yeah. and so that's really fun. We get angry people. <laughs> I bet. Right. I mean, well, 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 it's fine. Like, if you run a business and it's your property, it's like no shirt, no shoes, no service. Like, you can easily amend that and be like, well, if you're not wearing this, you can, as long as you're not discriminating against someone, if they're not wearing a mask, you can deny them service. Yeah. Look, you guys switch places on my screen. So that should be interesting for my editing. Uh, <laughs> so anyway. It does that. It does that. So, all right, so let's, uh, let's, let's, one last thing we'll talk about is the paranormal thing. I, I really want to get into this. I want to talk about it. I want to see how many of you have had an experience at the Empire Arts Center that couldn't be explained by normal means? Me. I was walking downstairs one time. Yeah. And my bra magically unhooked itself as I was going down the stairs. That might have been also it, it was like a two or three hook bra, so it shouldn't have unhooked itself. That might have been me. <laughs> but still, so you, though, it was still it's like a two or three hook bra. 
And that takes a lot to get that thing unhooked. It takes like. Crazy. What are you, a princess in the Middle Ages? <laughs> <laughs> got a full, full corset so, going on. He's in full brigandine. Anybody else have any experiences they want to share? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I had my whole ass grab. Like it got deep in fucking <laughs> deep grab. So Down we've got a pervert ghost at the we Empire. Are a horny ghost. Yeah, Luther. I, or, I what, think that Luther. might that might that I might have also been me. <laughs> you didn't grab Seth's ass though. Uh, actually, no, we grabbed there was a solid, in, but in the murder tunnel though. There was a solid ten feet of distance between me and the next person in line, who was Bethany, one of our trannies. The next person exploring this murder tunnel was at least ten feet down, and I had a full just palm grasp. On my butt cheek. Wow. In costume, so I was wearing uh, these bad boys. <laughs> and nothing else. Wow. And something got in there. So, for those of you that are watching right now and don't know what we're talking about when we say murder tunnel, what's going on here is the Empire Arts Center was built in 1919. It's a very old building. And so there were tunnels that were built underneath the auditorium to go straight back. That is how they heated the floor in the winter. And these are concrete tunnels with brick in them and, and what have you. And uh, they're very low to the ground. You have to bend all the way down in order to get through them. And that is where a lot of the, uh, the activity has happened in that theater. A lot of the paranormal, if you will, has happened in those tunnels. So that's what we're talking about when we say murder tunnels. That's and they are as creepy as you think they are. Like, cool, it starts creepy. off okay like with storage, and then it just keeps going and going. And it gets yeah. more sandy and pipey, exposed pipes and like creaking everything and it's like wow I, this is genuinely fucked in here yeah, it's, it's like cat everything cat. you've ever seen on a ghost hunting show right there in one place you know I mean, can, I just say, say, what? can i just say i don't have to bend down to get through those tunnels <laughs> <laughs> we got a, we got a walking footstool she's from dickinson yeah i'm a midget i'm actually i think two inches away because i'm five feet tall and to be a like a legal midget, you have to be four foot ten or under. I think the only person shorter than you was uh, Bethany. She oh, is Bethany's a legal midget. Oh I my swear God. Bethany's taller than her. She's a peanut no, character. No, Bethany is shorter than me. We compared. She is a legal midget. <sighs> really? You can't be a midget unless you come from Dickinson. Otherwise, it's just sparkling short. Or as you're just a poser. Or just a po How do you pose being <laughs> short? Just a poser. You walk on your knees and get special pants made. There you go. Our star on our basketball team was seven feet tall. He goes, <laughs> he lives in Fargo now, and he would have to, like, duck down to go through normal-sized doorways. Please tell me he kept his midget's jersey. I'm pretty sure he was a star of our basketball team, and he plays in Fargo, so. Phenomenal. Yeah. <laughs> Phenomenal. That I is just fantastic. Jersey. Excellent. Anybody else got any ghost stories real quick? From uh, the I guess for me personally, I just only experienced uh, seeing shadows and then yeah. being watched. Right, right. Uh, they really didn't fuck with me per se, just because I think they knew that I knew that they were there. <laughs> because mm -hmm. I would literally just look straight same. at them. Yeah. But then I wouldn't show them any fear, so I would just keep going. <laughs> No. Maybe it's because we're both ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> Brooke, you were saying something? Uh, I agree with Justine that like, I've seen shadows, and I know if a person is watching me, and I just kind of let it happen. Yeah. Huh. Now, I think I we and Brooke don't get fucked with, though, because we don't really pay, like, we pay attention to it, but we don't feed into the fear of it. Right. Yeah. Now we I'm have a little done. Bit disappointed personally. Go ahead. I taunted them so bad. I just walked down those <laughs> stairs into the basement. And went, hey, you bitch ass ghost, come fuck with me. And <laughs> I was saying shit like that the entire time I was in the basements. And the only thing that happened was they molested me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bit depressing. They didn't do more. <laughs> now I will say this. I <laughs> will say that because I felt that they are watching the girls change into their costumes. But yeah. that was with the men. No. Well, Either way, there's no consent. So. Either way. <laughs> we, have done, we have done two official 
ghost hunts in that theater that I've been along for the ride for. I've called in two completely different paranormal teams to come in and do a uh, ghost hunt on that theater. And we have caught things both times. And as far as we are aware, we know that there are two female ghosts and one male ghost. One is a, uh, one of the females is a child. And uh, the male ghost is just plain mean. And uh, we have um, uh, EVPs as well, uh, voice recordings. We have caught something on camera underneath the stage as well. So we do have video footage of that, a face that shows up uh, as well. Very angry looking face, I might add. And uh, I know I have had more than a few moments in that theater. I did not believe in ghosts until I started doing shows at the Empire Art Center. Bottom line. I have seen things. I've been attacked in that theater. I got pushed up against the wall and choked uh, over by the furnace because that's where we were keeping all of our props for the year one time. And uh, I went in there to look at the props and I got pushed up against the wall and a hand on my throat. I could not breathe. Um, another time I had, uh, I was locking up the theater for the night after a technical rehearsal. Everybody was outside in the parking lot. The whole theater's dark, just pitch black. And I felt something chasing me up the stairs from downstairs. I booked all the way around the corner and then out the back door there, shut the door. I'm like, no, I don't, that didn't feel right. I don't want to do this. Then my phone went off. There's nobody in the theater. My phone went off and it said Empire Arts Center on the phone. And I picked up the phone. I said, hello. And then it hung up on me. And that's when I went, we're done here. I'm getting a paranormal team <laughs> here. And uh, so, so yeah, that happened. Then. I don't like that, Kelly. I don't want to go back. It's real. I, as far as I'm aware, it's real. I mean, come on. Other people are going to tell me I'm full of it, but those are my experiences. The, uh, not this past year, but the year before, I was setting up the pizza downstairs in the uh, the big giant green room the, that we have. And you know, they have those curtains that are up in the hallway. Mm -hmm. Black oh, curtains yeah. there. I'm setting yeah. up the pizza. You guys are all upstairs doing whatever. I'm setting up the food and everything. And I turn and look and the curtains had parted and there's a face staring at me and it goes like that. And it shut immediately. Now I hadn't noticed, I noticed the face, but then, you know, the curtains are off the ground by about a, two inches or so. There was never no feet there. And so I went over and looked, I threw those curtains open and looked down the hallway. I'm like, hello, hello. And nobody's there. And uh, so that was another interesting story. But this last year is probably the one that gave me the willies the most. Really? I came Wait, out of my channel twice again. I was downstairs. I come out of my dressing room because I have my personal dressing room down the hall. And I came out of the dressing room. And I'm not going to name her by name because she's not here. But one of our trannies... As I, was, as I opened the door and I shut it, I got my tuxedo on, I'm getting ready to host the show. She comes walking down the hallway towards me and just gives me the stink eye. And I'm like, whoa, okay, sorry. I don't know what you're mad about. She just kept on walking and started going towards the stairs. So I just turned my back and went, okay. So I went upstairs and she's standing upstairs talking to you guys. And I'm like, that's impossible. You were in the, you were downstairs and I didn't pass, and there's no way you could have made your way around and up around. She would have had to go past me up the stairs to go and talk to you guys fast as she did. Because I saw her, went up the stairs, and there she is standing there talking to you guys. So that was probably one of the spookiest moments of, of my time there. You guys, some of you might even remember me saying that. I walked up to her, I said, you were just downstairs. How the hell? And yeah, no, she gave me the stink eye as she was walking by. Like, it just felt like she was mad at me. I'm like whoa, excuse me, I'm sorry. I don't know what you're mad about. We'll talk later, but I got stuff to do. Right up the stairs, she's standing there and she's happy as a clam. Everything's fine. She had been in two places at once. So <laughs> the one downstairs you're telling me was clearly not her. shifting ghosts in the empire. Something like well, that. Well, with demons, um, there's actual demons that can mimic. Mm -hmm. um, they're, they're called mimic demons, literally. Um, <laughs> and they can take any form that they have come in contact with yeah. like human um and just you know take shape as them i actually have a friend who um who was dealing with a mimic in their house and his girlfriend like he would hear his girlfriend calling him from the basement and he'd go down there and she wouldn't be there she wasn't home period oh, yeah or she'd be like taking a nap or something Oh, yeah. I've been in that theater by myself, completely by myself before, down in the basement, 
without anybody else in the theater. I just, I had keys at the time. There was a time when I had keys to that theater. And I'm downstairs and I'm working on stuff for the show. I'm putting costumes in the right place. I'm setting it up so that each individual character has their costume packed together. And I'm down there, it's like two in the morning and I hear someone yell my name upstairs. And I'm like, oh, oh, he's the, the guy who ran the theater at the time. I'm like, oh, he's back. He wants to talk to me real quick. And I go trotting upstairs. No lights are on. Nobody's in there. And I'm like, what the hell? So I'm like, okay, whatever. That was creepy. Go back downstairs to where the costumes are, and they're on the floor. Got to lay off the booger sugar, man. You know, <laughs> it was, it, the costumes were all off the rack and on the floor, and they were just haphazard as hell. Like something had taken their hands on the rack and just went, you know, and threw them all down on the ground. While I was upstairs so, to investigate, uh, who was calling my name out because it echoed through the art gallery that's up there. So it was like, so oh, Carrie, I, I think we're learning that you pissed something off in that theater and you need to like apologize Listen, because you are the You're the only one with negative like things, at least from positive. this cast. At least from this cast, you're the only one with really negative things. I've had positive experiences before. Uh, when we were doing EVPs on one of the ghost hunts, the little girl, I was giving the tour. It's on video. It says, oh, I'm walking past one of the hallway closets. I said, oh, that's where they keep all the Christmas stuff. And then you hear a little girl's voice in the background go, Merry Christmas. <gasps> and so I have that on. I have that recording as well. So that's kind of cute. Um, we have one where um, I'm in the tunnels downstairs. And you hear me, because it's just an audio, and you hear me go, okay, guys, maybe we better head out of here. We'll, we'll head back up. And then you hear me go, whoa, because I felt a hand on my arm. I didn't hear anything at the time, but I felt a hand scrape my arm. And when I went back into the light, I had three scratch marks on my arm. And on the EVP, you hear a woman's voice say, no, wait, just a minute. She wanted me to stay. Whoever she was had grabbed me and wanted me to stay. And uh, so that's, a, that's another real good spooky one but um she didn't want you to encounter the man again that's what happened you didn't wait kelly you didn't wait the guy has called me a dumb bugger on evps he's actually said you dumb bugger here in the background as i was talking about him he didn't like me talking about him i think he's the one that's attacked me i think he's the one that I, feel like, trouble. I feel like he just doesn't like rocky he's not cool maybe might be an old farmer who's just like this is stupid you dumb I'm bugger not. I've not once been messed with. I even, like, one night with one of my friends decided, you know, what if we use a talking board? And I use one, and nothing. Ouija board didn't bring... Didn't Benny, bring you just board. opened a portal. Yeah, you caused this. Benny, did you help us all? It always goes back to Benny. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's the root cause of everything. Benny just kills us all. Benny's a master of disguise. He grabs butts. He undoes people's bras. He's just Strangled trouble Kelly. on feet. Uh, I, mean, I really me. just want to know who molested me. You know, which one was it? Was it the young girl? Do I need to be, like, fucking worried about that? Was it the adult lady? Or was it the dude, you know? I'll never know. Maybe it was the lady trying to tell you to wait. She didn't want you to go ahead of the group. That's rude. It's, it's That's true. Rude. The little girl. The little girl hangs out in that tunnel. I have seen her in the tunnel when you're when you're on one end, and then you got the other end, and you see her head peek around the corner real quick and then go back. I think she's playing hide-and-seek. And I've, I've caught her doing that before where I'm walking in. I'm like, let's, let's look down the tunnel. I flip on the light and the head goes like that, right past the, right past the corner of the wall at the end. And I'm like, oh, sweetheart, you're playing, playing a game with me, I guess. So I just shut it back off again and I leave the room. Cause I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to mess with this. I don't want to play. What if you win? What if you win, if you win Kelly? Then I become what a ghost too. What if he gets dragged to hell? Oh, then, then he uncovers that some fraternal order hit a body in the wall or something <laughs> way back in the day. <laughs> You never know. Maybe you would free her spirit. Play, yeah. Kelly. Play. I should. Totally. I'll do that in October when I get up. The fact that Dean just looks freaked out when he said that. <laughs> anyway, like, play, so no, 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 no. Kelly, play. Let's play, wrap play. this up, guys. We, it's time for us to go. We've been on uh, for over an hour here just talking about some great stuff. So, thank you guys so much for being a part of this special episode of Nine and Numb at Home. This is the Rocky Horror Edition with the cast of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And uh, we hope to have you guys on another time again so we can tell more Rocky Horror stories. Um, maybe we can add some more cast members, make it kind of a big deal here. So without uh, any further ado, I want to say thank you to our viewers for watching. Keep your eyes out for our next episode of Nine and Numb at Home and have yourselves a great evening. Thank you so much.